right so i hope now i am audible and visible okay so let's start with some a uh, set of mcqs right so let's start with the mcqs and uh, mcq session so let's start with the first question which of the following condition is associated with polyhydraminous posterior urethral valve cleft palate congenital diaphragmatic hernia and bladder extrophy so the basic uh, reason why do we have polyhydraminous is which of the following condition is associated with polyhydraminous so why do we have polyhydramnos whenever the baby is not able to swallow or when baby is producing more urine we tend to have polyhydramnos so now what is the condition here because of which the baby is having polyhydramnos so either baby should pass more urine or baby should swallow more now if you observe a baby should not be able to swallow posterior urethral valve posterior urethral valve baby cannot pass urine so it will have oligohydramnos cleft palate cleft palate the swallowing is the swallowing is not appropriate so there can be more chance of poly right congenital diaphragmatic hernia again there is a compression on the esophagus so swallowing is defective so they can have poly bladder extrophy is a condition where you have oligo so i have two conditions here which can be poly but i have to choose only one because it's a single best answer so you can go with the more commoner that is the cleft palate so when you have two answers which can be associated with poly you try to go with something which is more commoner so here i'll go with the cleft palate right so the basic uh, thing which you have to remember always pertaining to the polyhydramnos is either the swallowing either baby should not be able to swallow or baby should pass more urine right because the major contributor for the amniotic fluid is fetal micturition so may more if baby produces more urine the baby will have polyhydramnos the following changes occur in the urinary system except during pregnancy so all of the following changes occur in the urinary system during pregnancy except increased glomerular filtration rate increased renal blood flow hypertrophy of bladder musculature increased activity of ureters so in the urinary system in pregnancy you have the blood flow to all the organs increased because of the increased blood blood volume and the stroke volume so increased gfr is seen there will be increased renal blood flow also hypertrophy of bladder musculature there is a slight enlargement of the bladder so you'll also observe hypertrophy of bladder musculature increased activity of ureters please remember in pregnancy every muscle is in relaxed state in pregnancy every muscle is in relaxed state so as every muscle is in relaxed state there won't be increased activity of ureters there will be ureter ureteric relaxation right so there is more chance of hydro ureter not increased activity of ureters so option d is false so basically we are going to try solving some mcqs which can be more commonly asked in your exams uh, that's the purpose of these sessions so i'll be trying to solve some mcqs because it's not only just uh, reading your notes it's also along with reading your notes solving mcqs the more you are able to solve the mcqs the more better you become through your preparation right
So in the urinary system, what all are the findings which you have, which you have pertaining to the pregnancy are, so there is increased renal blood flow, there increased GFR, serum creatinine, blood urea nitrogen also increases. So serum creatinine and blood urea nitrogen, everything is getting excreted outside serum, uric acid. So as the GFR has increased, all these waste products in the body will decrease. So serum, creatinine, blood urea, nitrogen, serum, uric acid will decrease. As well, serum, sodium, potassium, and chloride will also decrease. Serum, sodium, potassium, and chloride also will decrease. But you know, there's one point uh, which you always, uh, uh, in pregnancy, the estrogen causes sodium and water retention. So when there is a sodium and water retention in pregnancy, why is serum sodium decreasing? So although there is sodium and water retention, in pregnancy, you have dilutional hyponatremia. In pregnancy, you have dilutional hyponatremia. That's why serum sodium will decrease. Okay. So serum creatinine, blood urea, nitrogen, and serum uric acid will decrease. Serum sodium, potassium, and chloride also will decrease. And what increases in pregnancy? There is more amino acid urea and glucose urea. There is more amino acid urea and glucose urea in the pregnancy, right? And uh, the ureters will relax and there is more chance of hydrourator. Right hydrourator is more than left. left. Right hydrourator is more than left. Right? Next question. The term placental sign denotes alteration of fetal heart rate on pressing the head into the pelvis, spotting on the expected date of period in early pregnancy, permanent length of cord in the third stage, slight cush of bleeding in the third stage of labor. Now, alteration in the FHR on pressing the head into the pelvis is seen in placenta previa. Right. So in placenta previa, whenever you press the presenting part into the pelvis, there will be decrease in the FHR, which you call it as stall worthy sign. Which you call it as stall worthy sign. Spotting on the expected date of period in early pregnancy is called as placental sign. So placental sign is spotting on the expected date of period in the early pregnancy. So what happens is, so you have decidua, Peritalis, let's draw the blastocyst, covering the blastocyst you'll have decidua capsularis and below the blastocyst you will have the decidua basalis. And below the blastocyst, you have the decidua basalis. So below the blastocyst is decidua basalis. Covering the blastocyst is decidua capsularis. Covering the entire uterine cavity is the decidua parietalis. 
right so we mainly have three things so the part of the blastocyst the part of the decidua which is below the blastocyst is decidua basalis the part of the the part of the decidua covering the blastocyst is decidua capsularis the part of the decidua covering the entire uterine cavity is decidua parietalis right so up to 16 weeks the capsularis and parietalis don't fuse up to 16 weeks the capsularis and parietalis don't fuse up to 16 weeks the capsularis and parietalis don't fuse at 16 weeks the capsularis and parietalis fuse together to form decidua vera to form decidua vera this decidua vera up till this decidua vera is formed you can have some amount of spotting coinciding with her lmp that's a physiological which we call it as placental sign so up to up to 16 weeks you can have some amount of the decidua some amount of the decidua spotting coinciding with lmp which we call it as placental sign some amount of bleeding coinciding with her lmp which we call it as placental sign do you know what is the other name for this placental sign this is also called as hartman sign placental sign or hartman sign is confused with implantation bleeding implantation bleeding is implantation bleeding is bleeding at the time of implantation so usually it is seen at 10th or 11th day of the 10th or 11th day of post fertilization so it is seen at the time of implantation so it is seen around 10th or 11th day after implant after fertilization so these are the two things which are usually got get you get confused so implantation bleeding is uh, seen on 10th or 11th day after fertilization coincides with the implantation placental sign is because of the unobliterated decidual space up to 16 weeks you can have some amount of bleeding coinciding with her lmp which we call it as placental sign or hartman sign both are physiological you don't require to do anything for both of them okay so if we go back here the term placental sign denotes spotting on the expected date of period in early pregnancy right all of the following are seen in implantation bleeding except so i told you what is implantation bleeding right thin and watery in consistency associated with light cramps seen on 10th day after post ovulation bright red in color so it is it is post ovulation post fertilization on the 10th day so it is seen on 10th day post ovulation is correct so they are asking you except it is thin and watery in consistency so it's usually a physiological just at the at the time of implantation so it is thin there can be mild cramps so it is not bright red in color so it's not bright red in color okay all of the following increases at term except cardiac output minute ventilation gfr minute oxygen uptake all of the following increases at term except cardiac output minute ventilation gfr minute oxygen uptake 
so the cardiac out minute ventilation minute oxygen uptake and gfr all these increase at term so they are absolutely correct okay but cardiac output decreases at term guys cardiac output decreases at term minute ventilation gfr minute oxygen uptake all these will increase at term but there's a slight decrease in the cardiac output so cardiac output starts to increase at 6 to 8 six weeks it starts to increase at 6 weeks it is peak in pregnancy around 28 to 32 weeks and the the cardiac output drops down and then the cardiac output drops down and then post delivery in second stage it increases further by 50% so there is a slight decrease at term so that's why cardiac output in all increases at term but cardiac output not like it is going back to less than pre pregnancy value mild decrease mild decrease so this is regarding the different type of placentations a beautiful picture so if you observe the first one there's one cotyledon separate from the entire placenta but they are joined by vessels you have one cotyledon separate from the entire placenta which are which are supported by vessels right what do you call this as this is one of the commonest uh, confusion which students usually have one cotyledon separate from the entire placenta but joined by vessels this is succinctory placenta so when you have one cotyledon separate from the entire placenta but supported by vessels you call it as succinctory placenta okay next image there are two lobes of placenta is divided into two lobes and they are connected by vessels they are connected by membranes and vessels this is called as placenta bilobata placenta bilobata the third picture you have one cotyledon separate from the entire placenta not connected by any vessels this is called as placenta spuria this is called placenta spuria so if one cotyledon is separate from the entire placenta and it is attached by vessels you call it as succinctory placenta if one cotyledon separate from the entire placenta uh, sorry yeah one cotyledon separate from entire placenta and connected by vessels you call it as succinctory placenta if you have one cotyledon separate from the entire placenta and not connected by any vessels you call it as placenta spuria if you have two lobes of placenta separate with vessels then it is called as placenta bilobata this is a common confusion so i kept all the three pictures at one place so connected succinctured not connected spuria so usually this uh, one lobe of placent one lobe of cotyledon will present you with uh, retained placenta or secondary pph secondary pph this is placenta bilobata i there were also written velamentous and mad battle door so this is succinctured connected by vessels next one where the cord is attached to the margin of the placenta this is called battle door where the cord is attached to the margin of the placenta you call this as battle door when cord is attached to the placenta with vessels we call it as cord is attached to the membranes cord is not attached to the placenta 
cord is attached to the membranes and you can see the vessels traversing through the membranes you call it as velamentous velamentous subcentrate bilobeta all these can have the risk of vasa previa all these can have the risk of vasa previa right so what is vasa previa when the vessel travels below the presenting part when the vessel travels below the presenting part then we call it as vasa previa a 36 year old came for cervical examination pap smear done shows the below result what might be the underlying cause so what is the pap smear picture which you are seeing here so if you observe there is something like a cotton wooly arising right so this is nothing but the actinomyces this is nothing but actinomyces so where do you see actinomyces where do you see actinomyces actinomyces is seen with with iucd users actinomyces is seen with iucd users okay this is called as cotton wooly appearance and that picture is called as cotton wooly appearance so usually this is getting con this is usually confused with clue cells so if you observe here it will be like some filamentous originating from the uh, epithelial cells but if you have some bacteria attached to epithelial cell then you call it as clue cell so some filamentous uh, organ something arising from the epithelial cell you call it as actinomyces if you have back if you have cocobacillus attached to the epithelial cell you call it as clue cell clue cell is seen in bacterial vaginosis actinomyces is seen with iucd users okay a pregnant woman at 36 weeks of gestation is admitted in your ward during the evening rounds she is lying supine as shown in the figure what is the depicted below okay so at where is the figure i think i don't have the figure yes i don't have the figure so when okay so even without a figure you can answer this Well, what is the syndrome which you call when the patient lies down supine and the gravid uterus compresses the inferior vena cava called as so when the gravid uterus compresses on lying down when the gravid uterus compresses the inferior vena cava you call it as supine vena cava syndrome supine vena cava supine hypotension syndrome sorry you don't call it as supine vena cava you call it as you can all you can call it as sup, sup, supine hypotension syndrome or you can also call it as inferior vena cava syndrome So when the gravid uterus is compressing the uh, inferior compresses the inferior cava, they go into hypotension. So we call it as inferior vena cava syndrome or supine hypotension syndrome. Okay. Double blep sign in USG is depletive of.
so double blep sign is where you have actually the on the usg the amniotic sac when gives rise to yolk sac we call it as double blep sign when amniotic sac gives rise to yolk sac we call it as double blep sign okay you also have double bubble sign double bubble sign is seen in duodenal atresia but here they didn't ask double bubble sign they asked you double blep sign so double blep sign is amniotic sac and yolk sac okay so this is the double blep sign so the amniot yolk sac is giving rise to amniotic sac can you see a beautiful double blep sign so the yolk sac is giving rise to amniotic sac this two bubbles is called as double blep sign these two bubbles is called as double blep sign okay so there are few things uh, pertaining to double double which can come one is double bubble sign double bubble sign is seen in duodenal atresia then you also have double decidual sign double decidual sign is seen with decidua parietalis plus decidua capsularis you can remember it as cap the two outer layers of the embryo the decidua capsularis and decidua parietalis right so we have double bubble sign double blep sign and double decidual sign all three are different guys don't get confused between the three okay which of the following is done for screening of down syndrome in the first trimester so for first trimester we have double marker which is done between 11 to 14 weeks double marker includes mainly beta hcg plus pap a yeah. and we also have yeah. combined screening method combined screening method is double marker plus nt scan so 11 to 14 weeks mein you have double marker that is beta hcg plus pap a and combined screening method is also done between 11 to 14 weeks which is double marker plus nt scan so here they are asking you what is the method uh done for screening of down syndrome in first trimester it will go for beta hcg plus pap a right that's the double marker so that's why it is the beta hcg plus pap a so now uh, i think we have seen a set of questions today uh, so we will come i'll come back again tomorrow with some more set of mcqs which will try to solve and uh, will try to uh, understand for a better outcome in the exams so i'll be again doing a session tomorrow guys where will i'll be discussing again the clinical based mcqs so tomorrow i'll try to take a, a topic of amenorrhea because many students have always the confusion about the topic of amenorrhea so i'll speak about tomorrow amenorrhea right thank you guys all the best keep studying